Day one, I am standing on the threshold of another trembling world. May God have mercy on my soul. My heart is very sore because I know I have broken my poor mother's heart and my home is struck with unbearable anxiety. But I have considered all the arguments and tried every means to avoid what has become the unavoidable. It has been forced upon me and my comrades by a four and a half years of stark inhumanity. I am a political prisoner. I am a political prisoner because I am a casualty of a perennial war that is being fought between the oppressed Irish people and an alien, oppressive, unwanted regime that refuses to withdraw from our land. I believe and stand by the God-given right of the Irish nation to sovereign independence and the right of any Irish man or woman to assert this right in armed revolution. That is why I am incarcerated, naked and tortured. I believe I am but another of those wretched Irishmen born of a risen generation with a deeply rooted and unquenchable desire for freedom. I am dying not just to attempt to end the barbarity of hate block or to gain the rightful recognition of a political prisoner, but primarily because what is lost in here is lost for the Republic and those wretched oppressed of whom I am so deeply proud to know as the risen people. Day 9, 9th March 1981. I've left this rather late tonight and it is cold. The priest, Father Murphy, was in. I had a discussion with him on the situation. He said he enjoyed our talk and was somewhat enlightened when he was leaving. On the subject of priests, I received a small note from Father S.C. from Tralee, County Kerry, and some holy pictures of Our Lady. The thought touched me. If it is the same man, I recall him giving a lecture to us in Cage 11 some years ago on the right to lift arms in defense of the freedom of one's occupied and oppressed nation. Preaching to the converted he was, but it all helps. It is my birthday and the boys are having a sing song for me, bless their hearts. I braved it to the door at their request to make a bit of a speech for what it was worth. I wrote to several friends today, including Bernie and my mother. I feel all right and my, my weight is 60 kgs. I always keep thinking of James Connolly and the great calm and dignity that he showed right to his very end, his courage and resolve. Perhaps I am biased because there have been thousands like him, but Connolly has always been the man that I looked up to. Well, I've gotten by 27 years, so that is something. I may die, but the Republic of 1916 will never die. Onwards to the Republic and the liberation of our people. Day 12, 12th of March, 1981. I heard of today's announcement that Frank Hughes will be joining me in hunger strike on Sunday. I have the greatest respect, admiration and confidence in Frank, and I know that I am not alone. How could I ever be with comrades like those around me in Armagh and outside? I've been thinking of the comrades in Port Leash. The visiting facilities are inhuman. No doubt that hellhole will explode eventually. I hope not, but Hawhey's compassion for the prisoners down there is no different from that of the Brits towards prisoners in the North and in English jails. I have come to understand, and with each passing day, I understand increasingly more, and in the most sad way, that awful fate and torture endured to the very bitter end by Frank Stagg and Michael Gaughan. I have poems in my mind, mediocre no doubt, poems of hunger strike and McSwinney and everything that this hunger strike has stirred up in my heart and in my mind. But the weariness is slowly creeping in and my heart is willing but my body wants to be lazy. So I have decided to mass all my energy and thoughts into consolidating my resistance. That is most important. Nothing else seemed to matter except that lingering constant reminding thought never give up. No matter how bad, how black, how painful, how heartbreaking, never give up, never despair, never lose hope. I am making my last response to the whole vicious, inhuman atrocity they call hate block. But unlike their laughs and jibes, our laughter will be the joy of victory and the joy of the people. Our revenge will be the liberation of all and the final defeat of the oppressors of our aged nation. Lá seacht éag, an seacht éag úlá Márta, ní dig ucht ás hén. Lá éil a pódrig anú, is mar scanná ní rá léin rúd súlta sach. Fí mér áfrán agus mú cúd grúig a gárha a gom níz gúra, agus é vád níz fár fréisin. 
Sagart Nakra Ver Mahana, Vi Ara Nafran. Vina Gulli, a Turton Via Mak the Kok, a Via Chak the Rasha Nafran. Rinik Yeruk, Kunplata Big, a Hortusa. Kurgos Kormaig, a Kul Mer Mahi, Maris Nakra in Yon. Vima Swina Vernu, Ern Kaila Kansho. Dirndina Lawn Fuin Corp, Achni Kurmunin Sa Corpor Bit. Massam Kerkalor, Govil Sais Trodon. Our deuce, ni glacol and corp, la shinaspa big, as falling in she on kahu bit, as grey hair a hella, a vina sheer clipper on herp. Trident corp a rash carcolor, Octeran lay, ten gokro the rash cook and prevlod, she a meow. She a meow and others talk thee. One will meow, loid regut, concorneig a gokrod, ni varhig. Ni vegain spid troda gut, is on shin kenite a digging on meow carcho. Better as an own seer. Nihikin to go be an aeon ashin as a digging she. More of will she in inver on phone seer she's Christia. Ni veg she in inver to fain as Christia. Ni vrisha she'd may, Marton phone seer she, or the sea she winter in a heron in McCree. Chukigal no, nor a vegan phone seer she show, a tashpont a dean a galer in a heron, Sunshin, Kihimid, Irene Galley. If they aren't able to destroy the desire for freedom, they won't break you. They won't break me because the desire for freedom and the freedom of the Irish people is in my heart. The day will dawn when all the people of Ireland will have the desire for freedom to show. It, it is, is then, then we'll see, see the rising, rising of the moon. Of the moon.